Let the circles keep on turning and new mornings come again. In the smile of a stranger, you may find a friend. Don't be afraid to be the things you feel. Men are made of flesh and not of steel. Squeeze Play is a 1979 boob sports comedy directed by Uncle Lloyd Kaufman and stars Jim Harris, Jennifer Hetrick, Al Corley, Melissa Michaels, Michael P. Moran, and Zachary. Just Zachary. The movie doesn't waste any time with a nice porking scene. In this town, softball is life, possibly more important than roads and schools. Something's up, folks. I, I think it might be. Yes, folks, we're on to a squeeze play. And the crowd senses it, too. We get a nice, long-winded explanation of a squeeze play to pad out the running time, see a big jump, and yes! The Beavers are the Champions, brought to you by Dannon. As I was looking for Psycho Sid, look at this. Another fucking Dodgers fan. There's some locker room hijinks, but at least they're not throwing tampons at this guy screaming, Crazy Gary! Crazy Gary! This looks a lot like the locker room in Satan's Cheerleaders, minus creepy kangaroo masturbating on the other side of the wall. We get a nice jailbait scene because it was hip when Scorsese did it and learned that Wes and Samantha are engaged to be married and have an agreement where Wes will quit softball next year, but he has other ideas like being captain of the team. Just what does that mean next year's captain? Yeah, isn't that great, honey? Isn't you're going to play softball. You're going to be captain. You're going to leave me alone in the house just like this. Let me tell you something. I hate soap operas. I guess Sid stepped down. We then run into Southern Belle Mary Lou, who would go on to get a prom night sequel named for her. She's being stalked by a private dick, leading to this wonderful scene. You the proprietor? I'm the proprietor, yeah. What can I do for you? You making fun of me? Oh, I'm not making fun of you. Oh. Well, in that case... After being assaulted by Mahoney's partner in Police Academy 2, she ends up at some dive bar featuring a wet t-shirt contest and a low-rent Tina Turner. <laughs> Bros Before Hoes is in full effect tonight, feeding Samantha's anger at her beau while Sam experiences love at first sight with Buddy, who has no soul. Sam winds up meeting Mary Lou in the Lou. Ha <laughs> ha! and learns that she is well-versed in the softball arts. Sam seduces Wes into giving Mary Lou a tryout with the Beavers, getting her a job at the Serta factory and sweet product placement from Dairy Queen. Honestly, there are more ads in this film than a Michael Bay movie. Buddy is definitely not OSHA certified on that forklift. She gets her tryout, which goes well. <laughs> Because in the 1970s, that's not sexual harassment. You're just showing a lady a good time. Wes and Sam have it out, she decides to organize a woman's softball team. Man, this guy really likes Spider-Man. I'm sure Disney enjoys their property being used in a film like this. We get an obligatory training montage where the girls become beaverettes and spend time beating their meat. Finally, we get the never-ending wet t-shirt contest. It's a Wet to dry in a matter of seconds. Sam ends up leaving with obese Merlin Olsen, who has a head for the situation after practically trying to kidnap Sam, and Mary Lou is running away from the investigator who is trying to bring her back home to her daddy. But he saves the day and makes this guy a quadriplegic. Where is he? Up to down, Dad, with a fall. All this paralysis makes the two of them hunt, and they decide to get it on. Meanwhile, I guess Wes lives downstairs, and here's the passion, believing it's Sam and her paper towel selling friend. Tropicana? Pepsi? Advertisers are pissed at YouTube, and then dropping their shit in this thing? We get to the big game, and like Major League Baseball, it takes forever. I'm waiting for Manfred to give us some bullshit rules to speed this fucking thing up. Snapping bras and jock straps is allowed after the fifth inning. Couples end up tanking plays for their soulmates, and the film ends with, you guessed it, a squeeze play. Squeeze play! But it's an easy out. Shortstop picks it up. She throws. Oh, no! But the man's is there! 
with a beautiful backup Daddy, kick. West is moving towards home plate. Samantha's covering the play. The guys end up winning the game, giving us an unsatisfying ending to a mediocre film. The recipe for squeeze play is to take a bit of slap shot, mix it with a little bit of Rocky, and then baste it in a fine coating of sleaze. This film has a trailer park meth lab kind of vibe to it. Just passing through it makes you feel like you need to take a shower. It's your basic drive-in boob pick, plain and simple. When you look at it like that, then squeeze play is an acceptable entry into its genre. It is what it is. Until you get to the ending when the beaverettes lose. That is complete horseshit.